This video is going to talk about the concatenation operator in Verilog, describe some of its benefits and show some examples how it might be used, and compare and contrast it to some other ways that you might achieve the same functionality. So the concatenation operator has a number of benefits. It can allow you to create code that is more succinct and easier to understand than writing it using simpler constructs. Oftentimes it will take less time to write the code because you will be writing less code than if you were to write the code out using a basic approach. This is also tends to be less error prone because you're doing either less writing or less copying and pasting where you're making small changes and it's easy to overlook something. And the code that is written this way can often be more maintainable and expandable because you only have to change a small number of things if you want to expand it to a bigger set of bits or a slightly different case. So we're going to look at two examples. The first is one that would change the endianness of a number. You don't have to be particularly concerned if you don't know what endianness is, but basically different computer systems will store numbers or store information with bytes in different order. And sometimes you can need to change that order to go between two different computer systems. And so in this example, we're going to look at an endianness changer for a two byte word. And so basically to achieve this, this unit needs to take the most significant byte from the input and make it the least significant byte of the output. And it also needs to take the least significant byte of the input and make it the most significant byte of the output. And so the obvious way that you could do this would be to do it a bit at a time. So you could say, well, I'm going to assign the output eight and that's part of the most significant output byte. So I'm going to assign it the least significant input byte. And you could repeat this Well, we can do this again for the next bit and assign it to the next least significant bit. And we could do this all and also do it for the least significant output bits. But as you might imagine, this takes a lot of writing. And if you need to expand this beyond 16 bits, for instance, to 32 bits, this gets even more cumbersome. So another approach, we could do this instead of a bit at a time, we could do this a byte at a time. So we could instead say, well, I'm going to assign the most significant byte of the output to be the least significant byte of the input and could do the same thing for the least significant byte of the output. Say, well, I'm gonna make that the most significant byte of the input. And that's not too bad, but again, if you've got to do this for 32 bits, it gets a little bit longer. And we can save ourselves even a little bit more if we make use of the concatenation operator. So we're going to get rid of this. Instead, with the concatenation operator, we can achieve this all in a single line of code. So we can say that we want the output O. So we want the most significant bits of the output O to be the least significant bits of I. So we're going to make the top bits of the output equal to the lowest bits of i, and we're going to make the lowest bits of o equal to the highest bits of i. And there we've achieved this in a single line of code. As a second example, we're going to look at a case where we want to take some mask and use that mask and apply it to multiple sets of bits within a vector. So in this simple example, we've got a four bit input A and we've got a two input or two bit mask B and we want to and the mask B with each set of two bits within A and I'll put all four bits to Y. And so again, like before, we could do this with a very basic approach where we say, well, the least significant bit of Y is going to equal the least significant bits of A and it with the least significant bits of B. And then we could do Y1 with A1 and B1, and then for Y2, we'd be using A2, but we'd be using back to B0 since we're repeating the use of B. And while this is okay or not too bad when you've only got four output bits, you can imagine if you wanted to do this over many bits, or you maybe you even wanted to make this over a flexible number of bits, this would be rather tedious and perhaps error prone. And so kind of like the previous example, another way we could do this would be a subset of bits at a time. So we could say, well, for bits one and zero, we want to make that equal to a one through zero and it with B. And for the next set, 
we want to do the same thing, but with bits of A, 3, and 2, and then that would be, and that's a little bit better, but with the concatenator operator, we can do even better than that. So if we get rid of this, we can do this with a concatenator operator and a single line. So we say, well, we want to make Y equal to A, and it with a mask with B, where we've replicated B, in this case, two times. So we want to have two copies of B, and so by doing this, we get two copies of B, and we end it with A, and we're all done in one line of code, and say we needed to expand this to be more than just four bits, maybe we had eight bits. We, instead of having a two here, we could replace this two with a four, and that's all we need to do. We don't need to change any more code. Uh, this just expands to more bits. So this gives some examples of how to use the concatenator operator and also some of its benefits.